Hey guys, welcome back to the Simply Organized YouTube channel. I'm Samantha, a certified professional organizer based in Northern California. So excited that you are here. If you love decluttering and organizing content, this is the channel you want to subscribe to. I've been doing this work for many, many, many years. I own an organizing company and I would love to have you join us, so please subscribe. I am really excited to talk to you guys about this topic today because I really want to try and help you understand the value that a professional organizer could bring to your life or a situation that you're struggling with. I think that some of the obstacle thoughts that you may have are around the topic of how much it costs to hire a professional organizer and I want to break that down for you and help you understand. So today what I wanted to talk about is how much it costs to hire a professional organizer. When I was thinking about this topic, I know it brings up other questions like, well, what does a professional organizer do? And why would you need or want to hire a professional organizer? But I think those topics are better for another video. I wanted to start here because I know that the money topic, really around anything that you're gonna invest in, it's an obstacle thought. You know, it's something that's getting in the way of keeping you from getting the help that you might need. So I do have to start this video quickly with a little disclaimer because as a member of NAPO and as a certified professional organizer who is held to a different code of ethics and conduct, the topic of pricing and where we price ourselves is something that we're really not supposed to be talking about. So I am going to be speaking in general terms and I am going to dig in and get as close as I can to help you understand what you would probably be paying a professional organizer to come in and help you with. But Again, the deeper we get into this video, you will understand that price points can vary based on experience and all these other factors. But in the midst of me sharing this information, what I want you to know is that this video is intended to help the person who needs help with decluttering and organizing. By way of sharing this video, I'm probably gonna be helping my peers in some way, shape, or form, which I'm all for. If you're a new organizer and you don't know how to price yourself, you're kind of stuck in that situation of trying to figure out what are you charging, what are you doing? This video may be helpful to you as well, but the point of this video really is just to meet the people who need help. I believe there are definitely lots of things that will keep somebody from reaching out to a professional organizer in the first place. There's all sorts of things, right? But the money topic for sure is one of those high up on the list. So that's why I wanna break it down today. I wanna to tell you what you might expect and why. So let's get started. A professional organizer's pricing, first and foremost, is gonna depend on a few different factors. Experience, how large their company is, the scope of your project, what city you live in, what geographic location you're in, and in general, how they structure their business, their contracts and all that good stuff. So anyway, let's get started with experience because this I think is the king of this topic. Experience is the top number one reason why a professional organizer's pricing could be really high or on the low end. A lesser experienced professional organizer typically starts off at around $50 an hour. They work their way up to 75, then 100, and there are organizers who are very experienced who are making anywhere from $125 an hour all the way up to $500 an hour. Now I will say, I have never seen a professional organizer who charges more than $150 to $175 an hour. And that is top tier, high experienced, has the portfolio to back it up type of professional organizer. Don't let that number scare you. Keep in mind, you are not hiring a professional organizer to work with you 40 hours a week. You're typically focused in on a project or a small part of the scope of your project, you know, one step at a time. And most organizers work in hourly sessions, so it could be anywhere from a three hour session to a five hour session. So don't let that number scare you, but I did wanna put that out there just right out of the gate. But regardless, their rate is going to come from a place of experience. That rate is gonna come from experience and skill. If you wanna think of it similar to a really great interior designer or a really great contractor, these people have been doing this work for a long time. They have a lot of experience. They have a lot of know-how. 
they know exactly how to get it done and they are going to be efficient with their time too. Hiring someone who is efficient, somebody who is skilled and knows what they're doing means it is going to be done correctly the first time. This is not something that you will have to bring in another professional organizer later to redo a project or update some shelving decisions or bins. So when I was starting out, I charged roughly $50 an hour and I stayed at that rate until I had roughly 40 projects under my belt and I felt like I had some really great experience. From there, I bumped myself up to 75 an hour and I stayed there for quite a while. I stayed at that $75 an hour rate for a long period of time while I truly did the work, dug in, spent a lot of time truly understanding the type of organizing that I wanted to do where I felt it was the most natural fit for me. And then I raised my rate to $100 an hour. That was after a long period of time where the portfolio had really been built out. And during that time, I was working alone. I didn't have my team working for me yet. My rate is now over the $100 per hour rate, but that is because I have spent years doing this work. I now have a team of organizers who work for me and I further invested in myself back in 2021. For that entire year, I studied to take the board exam, to sit, to become a certified professional organizer. So since October of 2021, I am officially a CPO. And having that expertise, I put in the extra work to read the books, to learn, to further invest in myself as a professional organizer. I don't view this simply as a job. This is my passion. This is my career. This is something I take very, very seriously. So investing in myself, which would further then help me transference of skills to clients. It was really important for me to do that. And so as a true expert in this field, I can absolutely stand behind that hourly rate that we charge. I also know the value that we bring. And I know that's kind of like a little bit of a different topic, but as a small business owner, there's as a professional organizer who owns a small business, there's so many things that are going on behind the scenes. And I know the value that we bring for that dollar amount per hour. My team works hard, I work hard. And even when we're not with you, we are working on your project. We are thinking about your project. So, and we're gonna actually talk about that a little bit later in this video, but I feel like I may be on the higher end in terms of San Francisco Bay Area professional organizer pricing because I have the experience to back it up, the knowledge, the certification. I was sharing myself as an example here, but another way that experience can come into play when we're talking about an hourly rate is if someone has a specialty. There are many organizers, and we will cover this in another video, um, who have specialties within the world of organizing. For me, for example, what I do is I work with families. I'm specific to that niche. I know what families are dealing with. I know the general type of content that they have in their home. I know the struggles that they're facing because I work with families week after week. I also do a lot of our own installations of alpha material, and there's things within my niche that I don't really feel comfortable doing. So I know exactly what it is that I do really well, and that is where I stay focused. Now there are organizers, for example, my friend Casey Patey from the Inspired Office, she solely works in offices and that is it. She will work with you virtually, she will work with you in person on your home office she has a specialty there. So someone with someone who has niched down that hard and they truly understand the struggles that you might be facing in your home office, as an example, they may charge a little bit more because they know exactly what you're going to need and exactly at what point in the process you are going to need it. She would probably also, I suspect, have connections to services that might help better with like, digital organization of your computer. Maybe you have photos on your computer, so she may have photo organizers she can connect you with. She may have like the scanning tools that are needed to process all of your papers much more quickly. These are just a couple examples, but I wanted to share that the experience also includes specialties. So while we're on the topic of talking about experience and the hourly rate, I also wanted to touch on this before we moved on. It's important for you to go take a look at a professional organizer's website. Maybe they have their pricing listed. Maybe they explain their process. Take, you know, take a look at their portfolio, both on their website and maybe if they're on social. If they're on any platform, you can go take a look at their work. Maybe they have some video content on a YouTube channel. 
Um, and then the next thing would be, once you start engaging with them initially, ask as many questions as you want. Some organizers will charge a consultation fee. They will have an administration fee attached to the project. Some organizers charge a travel fee, depending on where you're located. It is totally fine and a very good idea to ask all the questions. Just ask away and a great professional organizer will be honest with you upfront about all the costs involved. One of my biggest jobs behind the scenes is managing the client expectation. We talk a lot about money in their project and it's something that we're covering week by week as their projects are progressing. I do not want anybody to feel surprised by an invoice. I don't want to blindside anybody. So it's important that a professional organizer be upfront with you. I think because we're such a unique type of service, even though professional organizing has kind of come into the mainstream with TV shows and everything, I think people are still a little bit confused as to what we do. And with that comes the question of the pricing. So just make sure that you're having an open dialogue with your professional organizer. And again, if they are experienced and they're a great business owner, they will have zero issues with answering any question that you have so that everybody feels comfortable. So another factor in the price point would be how large of a company they have. For a long time, I mentioned I worked alone. For many, many years, I worked by myself. But if I was ever going to scale this business and try to help more families, I eventually had to start hiring. When a business hires people, the costs of doing business go up. And then that will be reflected. The hourly rate will get bumped up a little bit to cover those costs. So some of it is gonna be just the cost of having to run a bigger business. Also, depending on the scope of your project, there may be more than just one organizer there working. So the more organizers there, the more the hourly rate will likely be. Professional organizers are all gonna structure their business a little bit different. Some of them will charge an hourly rate for every single person on the project. Some organizers will just put a flat rate for you and they'll send you like for the full scope of the project, this is exactly what it's gonna cost. This many organizers, this many days, this many hours, this is roughly the idea for product. It just depends on how that organizer has their business structured. But the bottom line is that if it's a larger professional organizing company, the hourly rate might be a little bit higher due to that. Again, this is another topic for another time, but I am based in California. It is very expensive to run a business here and have employees. I live in a state where I can't have organizers working for me and have them as an independent contractor. My team, they are all employees. When I have employees, I pay for a lot of extra things that you would never expect. My payroll service, workers comp, insurance, the infrastructure, all the systems that we use to keep the projects organized behind the scenes. There's a lot of extra costs that come into play and that money has to be made up somewhere. It's gonna get folded into the hourly rate or the administration fee. You kind of get the drift and you get where I'm going. Again, that's a topic that we can talk about another time. Another factor in pricing for a professional organizer would just be the overall scope of your project. You may have a smaller project just fixed on one room. You may have an entire house that needs to be unpacked. That is going to be a range in pricing. In addition to the type of project that they are working on with you, there may be other costs associated with that, like material, for example, if I was doing an alpha closet or alpha shelving in a garage, that would be an added expense on the invoice. There is a huge range of pricing depending on like, for example, if I'm doing a very large three to four car garage versus a single closet. Within the scope of your project too, something to consider is if this is strictly a decluttering project, how long do you think it's gonna take for you to make decisions? Sometimes you think it might move along pretty quickly and smoothly, but we don't know until we get into the project if you have any emotional attachment to things, if you have sentimental clutter around the house and it's gonna take you a little bit longer to make a decision. So the scope of your project may affect the hourly rate. The next factor that could affect pricing is where you live. If you live in a rural area versus a metropolitan area, pricing can differ dramatically. I don't really need to spend much more time talking about this one. It just depends geographically where you are. There are certain areas in the country 
where the cost of living is a little bit higher, the cost of gas is a little bit higher, that all plays into the pricing. Whether you live in San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, somewhere in the middle, the pricing is just gonna range based on what is happening in your geographical area. I sort of already touched on this one, but as a final point here, I wanted to share that pricing could be affected just by the nature of how they have their business set up. You could be paying for consultation fees, administration fees, travel fees. It could be a flat rate. It could be an hourly rate. It really depends on how that professional organizer has their processes set up. There are some, I have never been able to figure out how to do this myself, where they offer packages. Like if you buy more sessions, the price point goes down a little bit. So it just depends on how they have their business set up. I hope that this video took some of the guesswork out of how much it costs to hire a professional organizer. Again, it's gonna depend on if they charge by the hour and what that hourly rate is and how many hours they will be working on your project. And there's a few other factors involved, like I said, behind the scenes work, administration, travel costs, if any. So I hope that I've answered and gotten you a little bit closer to understanding how we price our services. If you have any additional questions, again, put it in the comments happy to answer. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I have a couple other questions that I want to answer another time, you know, why you would hire a professional organizer in the first place being one of them. But what I wanted to touch on a little bit and I can elaborate more in that future video is the process that happens when you do hire a professional organizer because this does affect pricing. I sort of wanted to share the process and this is just kind of a general overview from start to finish because there is so much that happens even when we are not with you. A really good professional organizer who's efficient is going to have that game plan set up before they even arrive at your house the very first time. So that means there will be some work that's being done in the office before they show up. It's not simply about us being there in your home and helping you move through the process of decluttering and organizing there are things that we are doing behind the scenes to help guide the process and have it roll out as smoothly as possible so i wanted to share with you the process from start to finish in my businesses again is a general overview because every project is going to be different some are small scale some are large scale that go on for a period of time but in general it's all sort of the same so somebody lands on our website they take a look around they decide this is the organizing company that we would love to work with they fill out the inquiry form. I receive the inquiry form and I respond to them with a calendar that they can then set up a 20 minute complimentary Zoom session with me. This session is as important to me as it is to them because it gives me a chance to see what's going on inside their home, to get to know them a little bit, they get to know me. It also allows me to assess the situation and figure out if I'm the right organizer for them. If they aren't, I'm able to refer them out to somebody else. But this gives us a little bit of time to get acquainted. Again, this is all complimentary still. I haven't charged for anything. In a perfect world, they decide to work with us. And at the end of that complimentary session, I follow up with an email. We go back and forth a little bit on scheduling. I provide them with a quote. We get all of that stuff wrapped up with a contract and we're off to the races. The next step is sort of gray, again, depending on what the project is that we're working on. It could just be two sessions where we need to help them move through a space, or it could be something that's ongoing for a year. You can see that the process would go in a few different directions depending on what the project is. But for me, back in my office, I'm working on emailing, I'm communicating with my team, I'm getting the game plan pulled together, we're working on scheduling, at this point, we do not charge an administration fee. I'm close to doing that because there is quite a bit of time spent behind the scenes. The one beauty of niching down as hard as I have is that, that there really isn't a lot of ramp up time to that. There really isn't a lot of necessary game planning that I need to do because I know the spaces that we work in so well and I know the obstacles, the issues that families are facing. So I'm not really having to go back to the drawing board every single project that comes in. So hiring somebody who has niched down as hard, as an example, as me, will also help to keep the costs down. So going back to the beginning, you landed on the website, you filled out the inquiry, we have had complimentary time together, we move into game planning mode, we move into trying to get you scheduled, pricing, a quote, 
getting a contract out to you, and then we get to work. It doesn't end there. If you had items that need to be removed from the house, we're also handling that. If it's a large scale pickup, we're finding the people to come and pick it up. If it's small items that we can fit in the back of our car, we're gonna load them into our car and we're gonna take them to a donation center. We're also gonna collect a donation receipt for you. And then in my business, when I return home, either that evening or the next day, I will send a, just a quick check-in to ask them how they felt about the session. Do they feel that it was successful? Did we miss anything? What would they like to focus on the next time? Depending on the project would be dependent on what I send out in that email. But I definitely wanna to touch in, check in, find out how they feel and talk about next steps. In addition to that, I will now have to work on invoicing, making sure that the invoice is getting out and then my bookkeeper will take over to make sure that the invoice has been paid. There is a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. So I did wanna make you aware of that. Some organizers are gonna charge you for that time and others just realize it's the cost of doing business. I personally am not gonna send you an invoice <laughs> if I'm emailing you back and forth. That just seems really silly and ridiculous. But some organizers might charge for that office time. It's a good thing to talk about and just get it out of the way on the first time you fill out that inquiry form or you have a consultation. Make sure that their pricing is very clear to you so that you are comfortable. It would be a bad idea if I also just didn't share with you that a good professional organizer is gonna end up saving you money. Not only are they gonna save you money because they're gonna help you get organized so that you're not misplacing things and going out to buy things. What I actually mean on this point is just that they are gonna bring in, anything they bring in in terms of product is going to be something that's gonna be long lasting. They know what works, they know what's gonna work in your space and with your habits. And so you're not going to be reinvesting in different types of product later down the road. I have shown up on many a project where there was a professional organizer there before me who installed a system that was not sustainable or the bins did not work for the long term. This is all normal. Everybody starts out somewhere, but when you hire someone with experience, it will end up saving you money. If you have any questions about what I shared today, please feel free to leave a comment and I will answer your questions. And I know this has been a very kind of general and broad video, but it was something that I wanted to talk about and there was no possible way to really get nitty gritty into the details. I just wanted to give you sort of like a broad look in on this. I wanted to share this today in case you were considering hiring a professional organizer, but money was what was keeping you from taking the leap and actually doing that. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I would love it if you would subscribe to our channel. I cannot wait to see you guys again in the next video and I will talk to you soon.